The Aztecs were a formidable civilization, known for their engagement in warfare. They pursued war for several reasons, to expand their territory, acquire valuable resources, suppress rebellions, and provide sacrificial victims to honor their gods. Warfare was deeply ingrained in Aztec culture, with all able-bodied males expected to actively participate in battles. This martial prowess allowed the Aztecs to establish a vast empire covering 200,000 square kilometers and extract tribute from 371 city-states across 38 provinces at the zenith of their power. Central to Aztec warfare was their belief in Huitzilopochtli, the god of the sun and war. According to Aztec mythology, Huitzilopochtli was born fully armed and immediately displayed his ruthless nature by slaying his rebellious sister and 400 siblings. The conflict between Huitzilopochtli and his siblings symbolized the daily struggle between the sun and moon, reflecting the continuous nature of warfare in Aztec life. Human sacrifices were regularly offered to Huitzilopochtli at his temple atop the Grand Pyramid, known as the Templo Mayor in the Aztec capital, Tenochtitlan. The leadership of the Aztec military was centered on the king, who served as the military commander-in-chief. Assisting the king was his second-in-command, supported by four high-ranking nobles, often relatives of the king, forming a war council. Various units of warriors reported to this council, with warriors earning status symbols like feather headdresses, cloaks, and jewelry. The elite units included the Kochik, or Shaved Ones, and the Otonton, or Otomies, open only to those who had displayed great bravery in battle. Aztec warriors received rigorous training from a young age in specialized military compounds. They mastered various weapons, tactics, and were inspired by stories of veteran warriors. Youth accompanied the Aztec army during campaigns, serving as baggage handlers. When they achieved their first capture in battle, they transitioned from boys to men, fulfilling their purpose to die gloriously in combat and return as hummingbirds. The Aztecs did not maintain a standing army, but instead called upon warriors when needed. Each town was required to provide 400 men for campaigns, forming a unit that marched under their own standard, but was part of a larger force of 8,000 men. This system allowed the Aztecs to mobilize up to 200,000 men for large-scale campaigns. Towns also provided essential supplies like maize, beans, and salt, carried by baggage handlers. Scouts and priests led the army on the march, bearing images of Huitzilopochtli. Elite units led from the front, followed by units from the empire's allies. Camps during campaigns were relatively basic, with reed mat shelters for elites and open-air accommodations for ordinary troops. Aztec warriors were adept in weapons handling, proficient with clubs, bows, spears, and darts. They used round shields and occasionally helmets for protection. Body armor, made from quilted cotton soaked in salt water, provided additional protection. Weapons like clubs and swords were embedded with sharp obsidian blades, while spears were used for close quarters combat. The atlatl, a dart throwing device, allowed warriors to engage from a safe distance. Shields made from wood or reeds were reinforced with leather and featured decorative heraldic designs. The Aztecs employed various strategies in warfare, campaigns often began to address perceived wrongs, such as the refusal to pay tribute or attend important ceremonies. Diplomatic missions preceded actual combat, with ambassadors attempting to negotiate tribute and recognition of Aztec gods' supremacy. If diplomacy failed, war ensued, and victory usually meant sacking the enemy's main temple. The discipline and ferocity of Aztec warriors generally ensured their success in battle, one distinctive aspect of Aztec warfare was the Flowery Wars, where both sides agreed that the losers would provide sacrificial victims. These victims, often defeated warriors, were sacrificed to honor Huitzilopochtli. The Aztecs did not aim to start all-out hostilities during these campaigns, but sought to acquire a specific number of victims, maintaining the balance of power. Successful Aztec warfare brought new territory, expanded trade networks, and parcels of land for nobles and elite warriors. Conquered rulers were often allowed to remain in power, although populations sometimes faced massacre or relocation. Tribute took various forms, including slaves, gold, precious jewelry, metals, textiles, 
feathers, and agricultural goods. However, the Aztecs also faced defeats, notably against the Tarascans in 1479 CE. They had to contend with rebellions from conquered peoples, some of whom sided with European invaders in 1519 CE. The unique characteristics of Aztec warfare, including diplomacy and the absence of surprise attacks, gave the Spanish conquistadors an advantage when colonizing Mexico. The Flower Wars, token victories to secure sacrificial victims, were not part of the European invaders' approach. Thus, the clash with the Spanish marked the Aztecs' first and last experience of total war, contributing to their eventual collapse.